all right so it's been a while i meant to get this up sooner but i just got back from a big trip so mm. so this is my bed with the cushions on it uh, with the cushions upholstered i did one kind of more talking about the frame and how it worked so i'll give you kind of a rundown um i'll kind of start off with how the bed works again out the cushions on it so you can see it and then i'll go into more of the technicals of what parts i use i don't have a parts list and all that but i can show all the different parts i've used and kind of some tips and tricks for doing it so first um i had this upholstered for like 300 bucks there's different materials um for you know making your bed memory foam this is latex downfall is super heavy but you can get them in different densities and one of somebody asked about the the uh spacing between these so there's two different spacings right this is um this has no problem with you know people worry about the push through and stuff like that obviously when it's all together you don't have to worry about that at all um, when you pull it apart then you get to your spacing I'll, I'll tell you what my spacing is here's my handbrake over here which these are a little funky they're not bad um, but sometimes you have to kind of hold them pinch them here to turn the handle anyway it's not a big deal they're very cool love them and then you're gonna need a handle on here um, they slide a little tough but you can uh, I'll get more into that you if you do it right and you kind of these vans wedge you know there's nothing no nothing square on a sprinter so you kind of have to space your rails on the side get them as uh, parallel as possible so that the bed slides I got mine pretty close close enough to where it slides easy enough for me so you just pull it like this and sometimes the handle will if you don't loosen it all the way it'll it'll hang up so just make sure you loosen it all the way and then it pulls right out it's easy i mean this is not hard pulls it right out and there's uh here's my spacing so my spacing is between them it's seven inches there's a seven inch gap so you're like that's a lot of gap so what I was going to do originally is I was going to put a board under here and have it upholstered in. And I was like, that's not practical. I didn't want to do that. I want to move my cushions around. I'll show you that in a minute. So um, then I was going to like, I'm going to put a quarter inch ply panels and I'm just going to bolt them down with some T-nuts through here, which you could easily do. And I could still do that. I, I don't have a problem with this gap. Um, obviously, you can make the gap smaller, but you're going to pay more in 80-20. I feel like this is a really good gap ratio. Yeah, if you if you step up here and you put your knee dead center, it'll push down a little bit. But again, if you get a, a denser uh, mattress, um, that'll uh, hap, that'll balance that out. And again, you could put the panels on here, but I don't care. My knee goes down a little bit. It doesn't bother me. It, if anything, I feel like it's a little more comfortable when you sleep because I only have a you know six inch mattress here. Uh, and it's super comfortable. I mean, this bed, I, I love it. I don't mind sleeping in here at all. Neither does my wife. So uh, that's the way I want it. I want a big bed, a lot of comfort. I put this rail on here, it's this little angle. And I put a little piece of trim on here just so you're not, because when you get up on your bed and if your bed sinks down, um, it's a little sharp and then I just rounded the edges. And what this does is because this can slide pretty easily, um, when you uh when this is in couch mode and you hit the brakes your bed can come sliding off it's never come fully off but it slides forward a little bit it's annoying so i put this on bed never goes anywhere now when you hit the brakes hard so that's great um so i'll close this back up again push in the middle so, i mean that slides great i i love it and I, again it was a little tough at first but after using it a while it's getting easier and easier and i think the rails are just these are little plastic um if you can see these, I'll show these in a minute. But these little plastic wedges, uh, they kind of wear with your use. So it was really tough at first. I was like, oh, this is tough, but it got easier and easier. Now it's just like super, super easy to pull out. So this bed has so many uses and some will seem stupid, but we've used them a lot. So I, I put these on for back support, just when you're laying up in couch mode. Um, and these are just the side pillows, but of course they're your, your sleeping pillows. So I will take these off. There's ways of doing, I'm not going to show you all that. It's not important. There's ways of maneuvering this around with all these pillows and making it easy. But 
So I keep my keep my slides for the window covers back here too. It's a nice little space for them. So what you can do with this, you can have them like this, which I kind of like, or you can flip them like this. And you can have them like this and slide them back. My van's not all the way done, by the way, just in case you're wondering what the wires are and all that. So you could do it like this as well. And it does matter. It, there's different, it, different comfort levels. I like them both um, for different reasons, but again, it's just something to show. Uh, then this is a mode. Well, you can swing it back like this and you can have a reverse couch. You can open up your doors. We've sat on lakes before. It's efficient, just hanging out, eating our lunch. And you can even scoot this bed all the way back, the couch back, so that you have a little floor space up there and you can just have your couch facing outwards, which is cool. Don't use it all the time, but it is, um, it is nice. This, in this mode too, if you have kids, I have a seven month old, this is a playpen. And we use it more in this mode than any other mode right now because we just throw the kid back there, the kid's safe, she can run around, do her thing. So that's been a real big uh, plus for us having a baby. Um, other than that, that's really it. So when you're going into bed mode, you just slide these cushions forward just like they are right now. And then you pull it out, this is what I do. So I pull it out and then you slide them forward and then pull it out more. And then just pull this one out. Bada bing, bada boom. I don't use those when I sleep. So this is a pretty big uh, mattress. And right now, because we're dealing with a crib, I have the double bunk beds in the front. But do, since we're dealing with a crib, we're sleeping three people across this thing with my little five-year-old and my wife and myself. Um, that's really it as far as the functionality of it. Again, I wouldn't change a thing about this bed. Uh, let's, you know, I was going to show you the, so if I got up here and I stepped right there, that's about the pusher you're going to get right there. If you're on the bar, it's going to go down, you know, a couple inches, a couple inches more. Again, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not standing on my bed. I'm not usually, uh, it's just not a big deal. And it sleeps great, so I don't see any reason to change it. Same thing, I just close it up so I can, a little bit like that, put it like that, like that, close it up. You can shimmy it forward so it sits right, and then do your handbrake. I have a handbrake in the front and in the rear. And then I'll, I like it like this. So I'll flip it up like that, like that. Boom. And that's in couch mode. Uh, oh, the other mode too, uh, it's worth showing. Um, whatever, I forgot. I knew I was forgetting something. There's different modes. Again, this may seem a little stupid, but we like it to use it sometimes. And that's just like a chase lounge. So we'll do it like that sometimes. Um, you can lay back and it's just more like of a chase lounge if you've seen those things before. So we use it, don't use it all the time this way, but if we're just posting up for a little while and we want to have a little more room, that's what we do. Um, went with the Sunbrella material, latex mattress. Um, latex mattress, again, is very heavy, so I'm not going to get into differences between why we ended up with latex, but um, you can definitely go with something lighter. Um, just might well go with denser if you're not going to close up the gapping more. All right, so that's it for how the bed functions. Now I'll kind of take you in to some of the materials behind it, how it's built. So I'm going to take everything off and then uh, we'll get rolling.
Where am I gonna put this thing? All right. Oh my gosh, this is heavy. Let me tell you, this is freaking heavy. Oh my gosh. Spill my coffee. All right, good enough. All right, so here's the frame after I took that extremely heavy mattress off. So um, I'll try to give you some measurements if they're helpful. So when this is closed up, uh, about almost three inches there, and again, seven in the middle, so you're splitting the difference of seven. I did just these, like a lot of people, I cut, I got a quarter inch um, uh, angle bracket aluminum and just cut them to size so I could save money. Um, a lot of people posted how to do those. Um, now, this is where I got a little different. If you've seen uh, 70 Savage did one of these, he did his bed differently. I wanted mine all to be level. So to do that, there's some challenges. So below here, I have... You can see this is a, a longer one. I forgot all the codes for these, but it's just a double. And then I had to attach that to the bottom rail. So if you look over here, I got two rails. These, these are the main part of it. Probably should start here. So you have one rail that attaches to the van and that goes all the way down. And then you bolt that thing um, directly to the van using plus nuts. So 516, 18 bolts I'm using with the plus nuts. And then, so you, you, you put in these two rails. This is where um, you need to make sure that it's the same distance from this one over to the other one, all the way across. And you may need to use some washers towards this side of the van, a couple washers in the last two connections. And I have one, two, three, four, five different uh, bolts into the van per side. I think one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have five. So, um, Connect those to the van. Maybe put a couple washers behind here just to get the gap level. That's not, it's not difficult now that you know that, um, but it took a while to figure out how to, um, how I needed to get this so that this will slide properly. So you connect this to the van and that's your main rail and you can connect off of it. This is my toilet. I can show you that some other time. That's my laundry. Um, and again, I'm cosmetically this is not finished which is good for now so I can show it um, and then you take your brackets there's angle brackets and you connect to your top bar your top bar is what the bed slides on and that is what this little deal is this with the little handbrake and your pads and these are the pads I was saying will wear in as, as you use them and get easier and easier um, to slide so, um, and I have, I only have two handbrakes. I have this one and I have the one back there on the back of the bed. And that's necessary. That back one is nice because you can lock it in place so that when you pull out the whole bed, the whole, the couch doesn't move forward, that it actually separates instead of pulling the whole couch forward. So that back brake is nice. Um, and this stops it, of course, when you hit the brakes from, um, slamming forward um, and then from the rail that connects to the van I have this crossbar and that's that double this goes all the way I have it again attached to some other cabinets here but it goes all the way to the other rail so you can just disregard my cabinets you don't need any of this it goes right over to the other rail and connects just like this one um, now this is where I got a little well I got different in a lot of ways but this is a block of wood. So I got a four, I got a four by four, cut it to size to the exact distance I needed. And if that's helpful, cause that was a hard part. Let me show you the gap of that thing. So that's about, that's about one and seven eighths. Um, and then on top of that, I have these sliders. 
Again, I don't know the part numbers, but you'll see them on the 8020 site. They're just little plastic sliders. Uh, be careful which ones you get. You want the ones that screw in. Um, so I screwed these. I got the wrong ones at first and I replaced them all. So you want the ones that have, I think they have double holes so you can screw them in to the wood. And then they just slide. They all slide on top of that. There's one. There's the end. You can kind of see it. And um, so all those connect directly to that wood. And that keeps it level. That, the hardest part about building this thing was me trying to make it flat, completely flat. Where this is flat, where this is flat with this, the whole bed is completely flat. Um, and the back, just did a couple angles just to bump that out a little bit. So there's a little support back there. Um, and I put a little, some pads in the corner because when this thing comes back, um, it can slam. I got it locked in place now. Yeah. Uh, actually, when this, this, that's locked in place back there. So. so when you slide this back part back, it was banging in the metal and kind of taking the paint off. So I put a little pads back there. Um, I actually made a mistake and I cut too short. So, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I could have just ran that all the way to the wall or um, yeah, all the way to the wall and then put this little slider in and that would have, it would have closed up the gap a little bit. Uh, in hindsight, I would have done that. I just moved everything in. Because what I had to do, because I cut that too short probably, is I had to build a slider here. I know this is probably the point where like people, are, I'm not doing that. That's nuts. Uh, but I built, I put a little, just a two by four. I bolted it in here into the bottom of this. And it's got one of those plastic sliders on the bottom. So when this, the whole back rail, when this slides forward, this part, it keeps that block of wood. So that, um, another reason why I did that, now that I'm realizing it, is cause the, when you pull these things in, they can hang down a lot. They can hang down. And I found that um, doing this block, actually I would do this block again. Um, doing this block keeps the whole rack, cause the whole rack is together, right? And if you could keep this one supported up, it stops it from flopping down. Because when you go forward and you cross this, this point, it starts creeping down and it puts resistance on it so that it makes it hard to open and close. That's why I did that. So I would do that again. It keeps the whole, the whole fork up. And then, well, I had to do it this way too because this fork will drop down too much and then it, it, it makes it uh, too, a lot of friction opening it. So what I did there, this is up, this is supported. This one needs to be supported too. So what I did is I put one of these, um, same thing, bolted into this one. So it'll slide out right against that and it keeps it up. And that keeps them all up. So again, that was just another little trick just to make this thing slide smoother. It's not really that hard now that you know how to do it. It's not that hard um, to replicate. So as far as specific parts, um, you can see how many of the, I've, these legs I've used. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 of these. And I'm not doing this all special edited YouTube style here, sorry. So those are... These legs are about, exactly, they are 31 and a half inches. So each one of these legs is 31 and a half inches, probably with the exception of these end ones, which my end ones are 34. But again, if you cut that back thing longer, you could do that differently. Again, if you do it this way or or you extend this all the way in, I don't, I don't think it matters at all because it's all secured by one of these uh, L brackets. So it's the same strength, same everything. Um, that's how I bolted those down to the, the bottom beam. Uh, put a garage light on the back, mounted to the 8020. Trying to think if there's anything else I can show you. So it's all these 
all these L brackets, which are super cheap because if you cut them yourself, if you buy them, they will be expensive. Um, these little plastic um, sliders. These, uh, if you'll notice here, these are the flat, completely flat with, um, uh, the, with the brake and three pads. There's different models of these sliders, so you want the one that's completely flat. I'll just give you another angle of that. So. Anyway, that's really it. It's that that part, this, um, the double, the double 1515 or whatever it is, these um, standard, some wood and uh, a lot of bolts and nuts and i think that's about it let me know if you have any questions um and i'm happy to answer them thanks